It happened long, long ago, and far, far away from our planet, all the way across the universe. A powerful burst of gamma radiation lasted a mere half second, but it released an enormous amount of energy. It was more than our sun would produce in 10 billion years. This brief flash lit up the whole sky. Afterward, a much softer and more long-lasting glow replaced it. Watching this fading light, astronomers on Earth noticed a strange infrared signal. It was invisible to the human eye, but could be perceived as heat. After examining the phenomenon with X-ray, radio, optical, and infrared waves, the astrophysics team made a shocking conclusion. It seemed that people had finally seen a newborn magnetar for the first time ever. This magnetar was likely formed after two neutron stars had merged. It resulted in a kilonova, one of the brightest and largest stellar blasts. Its light finally reached our planet on May 22, 2020. But I'm getting ahead of myself. How about we first figure out what these novas, magnetars, and neutron stars are? Imagine a massive star, at least five times the mass of our sun, reaching the end of its life. It might be because it's run out of nuclear fuel. If it happens, the star starts to cool off. The pressure inside drops, and the gravity starts to squeeze inward. And then, more than a million times the mass of our planet collapses within 15 seconds. It happens so fast that an enormous shock wave causes the outer part of the star to blow up. It produces a blinding burst of light. This powerful blast is called a supernova. What's left behind is an incredibly dense core with a huge cloud of hot gas, called a nebula, expanding around it. If the star has been massive enough, more than 10 times the size of the sun, it's likely to turn into a black hole. By the way, when a star similar in size to our sun runs out of its fuel, it turns into a white dwarf. It expels most of its outer material, and only the star's hot core remains intact. Such a core usually gets heated up to 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A white dwarf is just a bit bigger than our planet, but half as massive as the sun. In other words, these stars are some of the densest objects in the universe. A white dwarf can be 200,000 times denser than the Earth. It usually takes a white dwarf over a billion years to cool down. Under certain conditions, such a star can erupt, and this event is called a nova. It's way less bright than a supernova, or even a kilonova, which occurs when two neutron stars, or a neutron star and a black hole, merge into each other. Anyway, back to a supernova. If a star is large, but not massive enough to turn into a black hole, it turns into a neutron star. It's basically a giant nucleus, the central part of an atom. These stars are mostly made up of neutrons and are rarely larger than 20 miles across. For comparison, our Sun is almost 865,000 miles across, which is 109 Earths put side to side. But don't let this relatively tiny size fool you. Any neutron star is at least one and a half times heavier than our Sun and has an intense magnetic field. If you scooped just a teaspoon of this star's insides, this matter would weigh more than a billion tons. That's so dense that it makes neutron stars some of the most extreme objects people know about. The next stop is the black hole itself. When two neutron stars merge, they most often create a new, much heavier one. Within milliseconds, or even less, this star collapses into a black hole. But the astronomers who examined the flash of light recorded in March think there might be another outcome. They're almost sure they saw something never observed before, the birth of a magnetar. That's an exotic form of a neutron star with an ultra-strong magnetic field. It's 1,000 trillion times stronger than our planets. This field is also so powerful, it heats the star's surface up to 18 million degrees Fahrenheit.
Neutron stars are weird and scary. Their interior is a never-ending dance of particles in extreme conditions. It results in unexpected and odd structures. For example, closer to the surface, hundreds of neutrons form blobs. Those are not unlike some weird kind of space nochi. They mold into long chains once you go deeper. Not that you'd ever be able to explore a neutron star from up close. These long chains look like a layer of spaghetti. Underneath, there's a region of even more extreme pressures. That's where our spaghetti turns into lasagna sheets, since we've started on this pasta comparison. Finally, under all these layers, even lasagna loses its form and becomes a shapeless mass. But even in this mass, there are some tube-shaped gaps. And don't they look like ZD? Another thing about neutron stars, they're spinning nonstop. And this spinning is fast, more than several hundred times per second. The fastest spinning neutron star makes more than 700 turns per second. That's 42,000 times per minute. Neutron stars also have incredibly strong magnetic fields. That's why if there was life on a neutron star, it would be two-dimensional. The star's gravity is so powerful it literally flatten anything on its surface. And if such a star had an atmosphere, it wouldn't spread up further than a foot or so above the surface. But if neutron stars are bizarre and spooky, magnetars are too, perhaps even more so. Thanks to their incredible magnetic pull, these stars would win in the strongest magnetic field competition, hands down. To put it simply, Magnetars are the most powerful magnets in the universe. Their magnetic fields can seriously mess with the neighborhood. Atoms, unlucky enough to get close to such a star, get stretched into pencil-thin lines. If you somehow found yourself several hundred miles away from a magnetar, it would end badly for you. The magnetic field would first disrupt your bioelectricity. It means that your nerve impulses wouldn't work anymore. But that's not all. Even your molecules would change under the influence of the star's field. In the end, you'd kind of vanish. If a magnetar flew within 100,000 miles from our planet, it'd wipe out the data on every single credit card in the world. Astronomers have seen magnetars before, but they've never witnessed one getting born. After the light was first detected, scientists understood something didn't add up. They compared different kinds of observations. It turned out that the light spotted by the Hubble Space Telescope was 10 times brighter than predicted. This information made the scientists think outside the box. They realized an entirely new phenomenon was going on. The team had several ideas that could explain the bizarre brightness, but the most probable one was also the most eccentric. Before, scientists thought magnetars only appeared after massive stars exploded and left behind super-magnetized neutron stars. But now, they suppose a small number of magnetars may actually appear in a more peaceful way after two neutron stars merge. Scientists only know about no more than 10 magnetars in our home Milky Way galaxy. They don't know for sure what makes these stars so terrifyingly magnetic. Whatever it is, magnetars don't seem to last long. After 10,000 years or so, they return to a more familiar neutron star state. They're still extremely magnetic, super dense, but not so extreme. The closest magnetar people know about is 9,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation Carina. Astronomers think the original star was 30 to 40 times the mass of the Sun, which is a really big one. Another magnetar is 18,000 light years away from our planet. It suddenly started to burst in 2002. Around 80 bursts were recorded within a four hour window. After that, the magnetar has never been active again. By the way, the researchers were also immensely excited about seeing a kilonova. It occurred when the two neutron stars supposedly merged. A kilonova 
is more than 1,000 times brighter than a typical nova. Before, astronomers had only one confirmed and examined event of the kind. But the kilonova recorded in March looked different, and it might allow scientists to explore the diversity they knew nothing about. Now, it's been a long time since there was a supernova in the Milky Way. Over 400 years, to be precise. So hey, we're long overdue. So here are the most likely stars to go boom, if they haven't already. At the top of the list must be the Southern Hemisphere's star, Eta Carini. Greek letters before the name of the constellation indicate the rank of the star's brightness in that constellation. Sir Edmund Halley, in 1677, recorded Eta Carini as the seventh brightest star in the constellation Carina, Eta being the seventh letter in the Greek alphabet. It might not have looked very bright to Sir Edmund and his contemporaries in the 17th century, but modern studies of Eta Carini estimate it's 5 million times more luminous than our Sun. Luminous is a technical word astronomers use. It doesn't just mean brightness. Luminosity refers to the total energy released at all frequencies. Eta Carine releases 5 million times more energy than the Sun. Truly one of the whoppers of the Milky Way, Eta Carine is 100 times more massive and 240 times larger than our yellow-white dwarf sun, Sol. Obviously, since it appears dim, Eta Carine is pretty far away, about 7,500 light-years away. Yet even at this distance, if this star goes hypernova, it can still impact Earth's ozone layer, disrupt satellite communications, and harm astronauts. 159 years after Halley's observation, Eta Carine experienced a nova-like explosion. It increased from a relatively dim star to become the second brightest star visible from Earth, but only for a period of 27 years. From 1836 until 1863, Eta Carini was the second brightest visible star after Sirius, the dog star. And Sirius is only about 8 light years away. Since 1863, aside from a couple of flare ups, Eta Carini has dimmed back down to its original brightness at magnitude 4.5. Now, astronomers owe us a small apology, which we don't expect to get anytime soon, for star magnitude nomenclature. The brighter a star is, or planet, or moon, the lower its magnitude. Thus, stars brighter than first magnitude are either zero magnitude or negative magnitude. The full moon, for example, is magnitude negative 13. A magnitude positive 4.5 star, like Eta Carini, is quite dim as seen from Earth. But it's clearly visible in a night sky without light pollution or clouds if you live anywhere south of the latitude of Cairo, Egypt. 30 degrees north latitude is the farthest north you can see this star. Now, listen up. Eta Carine is currently up to something. It's been brightening again and is now brighter than at any time since 1864. It's a complex situation. Eta Carine is really two stars. Eta Carine A and Eta Carine, hmm, what's your guess? Oh, B. There's a third star nearby that's also interacting with the double star's dynamics. Now, without looking, I'm guessing it's named Eta Carine C. Good guess. Blown out into two incredibly massive globes of gas that are expanding at 20 million miles per hour, Eta Carine is, without a doubt, one of the strangest looking stars you'll ever see. Remember, it's located at a great distance of 7,500 light years away from us. And if anything had happened to Eta Carine in the last 7,500 years, like going hypernova, we wouldn't be able to see it. Because none of Eta Carini's electromagnetic radiation would have gotten here yet. Astronomers are keeping a close watch on Eta Carini because it can go hypernova at any time. Or maybe it already did 5,000 years ago. In which case, we'd only have to wait another 2,500 years to see it. Yeah, like I'll put it in my planner. Now, from a list of over 30 likely candidate stars that might go supernova, Rho Cassiopeiae is many astronomers' choice. Another Greek letter, Rho, is the 17th letter in the Greek alphabet. It means that Rho Cassiopeiae is the star with the 17th brightest apparent magnitude in the constellation Cassiopeia. Yet Rho Cass, a nickname, is only one of seven known yellow hypergiant stars in the Milky Way. It's another whopper. 
To be seen at magnitude 4.5 from a distance of about 10,000 light years away, Rho Cass must be a very large star, a hypergiant. Placed where the Sun is, Rho Cass would encompass the orbit of Mars. But it's still yellow. It's not a red giant star. Red indicates a cooler surface temperature. Rho Cass, as huge as it is, is still as hot on its surface as our Sun, or even a little hotter. That can only mean two things. Deep inside its core, Rho Cass is fusing atoms much heavier than hydrogen or helium. Plus, Rho Cass is producing much more energy than a red giant star. In the year 2000, Rho Cass erupted massively. It brightened by two orders of magnitude as it ejected 10,000 times the mass of Earth into space at four times the speed of sound. Astronomers detected the signature of titanium oxide in this eruption. This means that Rho Cass is much closer to going supernova, or in this particular case, hypernova, than astronomers used to assume. Iron is just a few steps above titanium in the periodic table, and when iron forms, fusion stops and a star collapses. Rho Cass is really close, or more correctly, was really close. Because the eruption we saw in the year 2000 really happened 10,000 years before, Many astronomers think Rho Cass has already gone hypernova, formed a black hole, and doesn't even exist anymore. Meanwhile, Betelgeuse caught everyone's attention not so long ago. The star, not the movie. It dimmed dramatically, appearing only 37% as bright as it usually is. Is it getting ready to go supernova? Betelgeuse is by far the brightest star in the whole sky, in infrared light. This is an important fact because it relates to Betelgeuse's status as a supernova candidate, as we shall soon see. Betelgeuse is also named Alpha Orionis, another Greek letter designation. So we should conclude that Betelgeuse is the brightest star in Orion, right? Wrong. It's the second brightest star in its constellation. Rigel, or Beta Orionis, is the brightest one in that region. Yeah, figure that one out. It may be because Betelgeuse is classified as a semi-regular variable star, which sounds kind of redundant to me. Its approximately 400-day cycle of pulsation changes its brightness by about one full magnitude, going from much brighter than a first magnitude star to closer to a second magnitude star. But never was Betelgeuse observed to dim so rapidly or so drastically as it did recently. So what's going on with it? Well, from late 2019 to mid-2020, Betelgeuse went through a period of substantial dimming during a mass ejection event. The world astronomy community jumped on the situation, and in the course of their investigations, they came up with some surprising new factual data on Betelgeuse. First, Betelgeuse is not as far away as we once thought. The new, more accurate distance for Betelgeuse is 548 light years. That's 25% closer than previously measured. The second new fact, Betelgeuse's diameter has been reduced by the same percentage. The star is now known to be 25% smaller than previously believed. The cause of Betelgeuse's dramatic dimming was also determined. The giant star ejected a cloud of gas that contained magnesium. The cloud blocked a large portion of the light coming from Betelgeuse and made it appear visually much dimmer than it really was. Magnesium is not halfway to iron on the periodic table which means Betelgeuse is not as far along on the path to a supernova as was suspected previously. When iron starts forming in the star, it means that this star is close to shutting down its fusion reactions. The next step is implosion. We aren't quite there yet with Betelgeuse. This star emits most of its energy as infrared light, and it also indicates that its core is most probably still burning helium, and not something that would greatly increase the amount of heat, like carbon for instance. Betelgeuse will still go supernova, but not for another 100,000 years. So you can cross it off your supernova list for the time being. And as for how to correctly pronounce Betelgeuse, you can say it any way you like. There are as many different pronunciations out there as there are people who think they know how to pronounce it correctly. Now, Supernova 1987A caught astronomers off guard when it lit up the large Magellanic Cloud 100,000 plus light years away from the Milky Way. That's when attention was turned to a similar star much closer to Earth, Rigel, in the constellation of Orion. Could Rigel surprise us and suddenly go supernova? There's something called the supernova problem that you should, you know, probably know about because it may relate to Rigel going supernova or not. 
It seems that stars over 17 solar masses don't always go supernova. Recently, a red giant star simply vanished. Once again, it didn't go supernova, it disappeared. This had often been happening in computer simulations of supernova, and now it finally occurred in real life. Rigel's mass is 21 solar masses. In other words, it's 21 times more massive than our Sun. So, will Rigel go supernova or simply vanish into a black hole that it'll create in its core? Astronomers and physicists continue their work of learning more about the dynamics of massive stars, scouring the sky for the next supernova in the Milky Way. Meanwhile, we can rest confident that we on Earth are in no danger from the harmful effects of nearby supernova explosions. We live in a nice, quiet, peaceful, stellar neighborhood. Except for those Martians next door. It was the year 2017 when astronomers spotted a bright star hurtling out of the Milky Way. It was moving incredibly fast at a speed of 2 million miles per hour. That's almost four times as fast as the Sun orbits around the center of our home Milky Way galaxy. It takes our star more than 225 million years to complete one journey. Anyway, back to our star, the Wanderer. The main issue with it was that it was moving against the direction in which most stars travel around the center of our galaxy. Even more bizarre, it consisted of totally different star stuff. Astronomers managed to identify its composition. The star was made up of heavy metallic atoms. At the same time, most of the other stars consist of way lighter elements. The Wandering Star got the name LP40365. It was moving so fast that it literally dashed out of our galaxy. This made scientists believe that the space traveler was pushed out of its place by some kind of cosmic disaster, like a supernova. A supernova is the largest explosion that can take place in space, an explosion of a star. It happens after irreversible changes start in the core of a star. Supernovas can occur in two ways, in binary star systems and when there's a single star. Binary stars are two stars orbiting around the same center. At some moment, one of the stars, a very dense white dwarf, starts stealing matter from its companion. After some time, this thief accumulates too much matter, which causes it to explode into a supernova. Or it can be a single star nearing the end of its life. It's running out of its fuel. More and more mass is flowing into the core of the star, in the end, the core becomes so heavy that it fails to withstand its own gravity. After the core collapses, a tremendous amount of energy is released in a supernova. But astronomers still can't figure out how a supernova could send LP40365 flying. There are more questions than answers. Was it a companion star that got flung out by a shockwave created by a supernova? Or was it a piece of the exploded star? A new study based on the collected data has shown that the star, which is a white dwarf, keeps slowly rotating around its axis. Astronomers are almost sure it means LP40365 is indeed just a chunk of space debris, and not a full-fledged star. This wandering piece somehow managed to survive one of the fiercest space events. But after making such a conclusion, scientists realize something amazing. LP40365's unusual features could appear after the star witnessed a supernova. Even though this event happened lightning fast, the entire makeup of the star got changed. Most stars consist mainly of helium and hydrogen, but LP40365 is different. It contains such heavy elements as magnesium, oxygen, and neon. It must have been the supernova that added these atoms to the star's composition. By the way, astronomers consider all elements that are heavier than helium to be metals. This means that after witnessing the supernova, LP40365 became metallic. Right now, the star doesn't have its own planets, but NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which is on the lookout for distant planets passing in front of their host stars and dimming them, has noticed a curious thing. LP40365 brightens and then dims again every 8.9 hours. It might mean that the star pulsates, but usually stellar pulsations are much less regular. A more plausible explanation is that the star's surface is uneven. And as it spins, sunspots are brought into and out of view. 
And it's great news, because after astronomers figure out how fast the star rotates, they can understand what happened to it around 5 million years ago during the supernova. Bright blue exoplanet HD 189733b looks peaceful and eerily familiar. Doesn't it resemble Earth? But this appearance conceals the planet's terrifying nature. There, the winds blow at 5,400 miles per hour. It's seven times the speed of sound. But that's not the worst. It rains glass, sideways, in this scorching, hot world. Neutron stars are ultra-dense collapsed cores of giant stars. They emit X-rays or radio waves. But in 2018, astronomers discovered a weird stream of infrared light. It seemed to be coming from a neutron star 800 light-years away from our planet. The most plausible theory is that this signal was probably produced by a disk of dust surrounding the star. But there isn't enough evidence to confirm this idea. Mercury is the fastest planet in the solar system. It zips around the sun at a breakneck speed of more than 100,000 miles per hour. That's around 40,000 miles per hour faster than our home planet. It's one of the reasons why a year on Mercury equals 88 days on Earth. Mercury is the planet that orbits the closest to the Sun. That's why if you were standing on its surface at its closest approach to our star, the Sun would look more than three times as large as it does on Earth. The Black Widow Pulsar is a rotating neutron star that is munching on its partner, which is a lightweight brown dwarf star. The more material the pulsar consumes, the more slowly it spins. The energy the neutron star is losing in the process causes the companion star to dwindle. There's a stellar nursery in the constellation Centaurus, and even though this place is called a nursery, it's anything but peaceful or safe. It's made up of hydrogen and newborn stars and is located in a nebula around 6,500 light-years away from Earth. A nebula is a giant cloud of gas and dust floating in space. The intense energy baby stars emit makes hydrogen clouds glow ominous red. This energy is so powerful, it's eating away dark clouds of dust. Astronomers can see them disappear like lumps of butter on a hot frying pan. Faraway Neptune-sized exoplanet Gliese 436b is a paradox. It's made of scorching hot ice, and this ice is burning. The planet completes one full orbit around the red dwarf Gliese 436 in just two days. It means the exoplanet travels very close to its parent star. That might be the reason why the planet's temperatures rarely drop below 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But the strangest thing? The planet hosts huge volumes of water ice known as Ice X. And this ice remains solid despite such incredibly high temperatures. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It's 318 times as massive as Earth. It's also two and a half times as massive as all other planets of the solar system combined. But here's a paradox. If this gas giant got even more massive, it'd actually become smaller. The added mass would make the planet denser, and this would cause it to start pulling in on itself. Astronomers claim that Jupiter can eventually end up being four times as massive as it is now. But at the same time, its size won't change. DGSAT1 Galaxy is as big as the Milky Way, but it's nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thin. But what makes the galaxy so unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind. Those are usually found in clusters. It can mean that DGSAT1 was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, the galaxy is a real living fossil. Saturn's moon, Hyperion, is one of the most bizarre-looking moons in the solar system. But the appearance isn't the strangest thing about this space body. The pumice stone-like rock is pockmarked with countless craters, and it's also charged with static electricity, which is flowing out into space. About 4,000 light-years away from Earth, there's a planet that seems to be one enormous diamond. The planet is denser than any other discovered so far and consists mostly of carbon. It's so dense that astronomers think this carbon might be crystalline. It means that at least some part of the planet is diamond. 
Ceres is the most massive space body in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. It totals almost a third of the entire mass of the whole belt. But at the same time, Ceres is the tiniest of the dwarf planets out there. It's also the only dwarf planet that dwells in the asteroid belt, and also the only one that is located in the inner solar system. Astronomers sometimes call Jupiter a failed star. The gas giant indeed contains a lot of helium and hydrogen. But its mass isn't enough to start a fusion reaction in its core. And that's exactly how stars produce energy. They fuse the atoms of hydrogen together under extreme pressure and heat and create helium. In the process, they also release light and heat. Jupiter could start a nuclear reaction and become a star only if it was 70 times its current mass. Space is completely, eerily silent. That's because in the vacuum of space, there's no atmosphere, and the sound waves need some medium to travel through. That's why worlds with atmospheres like Earth are full of noise. Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have enough mass of a thousand sedans. One theory claims that tons of micro black holes could be created right after the Big Bang. Some scientists even go so far as to say that a couple of mini black holes pass through our planet every day. Every hour, the Sun sends more energy to Earth than our planet uses in a year. Even though people are now using much more solar energy than a decade ago, it's still a mere 0.7% of the world's annual electricity usage. There might be moons orbiting other moons, but astronomers haven't agreed on this theory yet. Planets orbit stars, moons orbit planets. But why can't there be moon moons, also known as submoons, moonettes, and moons? Researchers claim that moon moons could exist, but the host moon has to be massive enough and the moon moon small enough. There must also be a large distance between these moons and the host planet. Jupiter is the most massive planet in the solar system. This means its gravity is also the most intense. It's 2.5 times as great as what we have on our home planet. Once, the gas giant's gravity even tore apart a large comet called Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. Then the planet eagerly swallowed the chunks of the former comet. If you were standing at the equator on Mars, the temperature at your feet would feel like that of a warm spring day, but your head would be literally freezing. Lost in space and drifting through galaxies, rogue planets were once flung away from their parent stars, but one of them floating 200 light years away from Earth is different from the rest. It's a planet-sized object with a magnetic field 200 times stronger than that of Jupiter. This field is so powerful that it generates never-ending flashing auroras in the planet's atmosphere. Europa is one of Jupiter's largest moons, even though it's smaller than Earth's moon. But the cool thing about this satellite of the gas giant is that it's covered with ice. And some of this ice is smooth, which means you could skate there. And a three-foot axle jump you can perform on our planet would take you 22 feet into the air. At the same time, the landing speed on Europa would be the same as it is on Earth. Haumea, a dwarf planet orbiting the Kuiper Belt, has a bizarre elongated shape and two moons. The day on this planet lasts four hours, making it the fastest spinning large object in the solar system. But the most mysterious thing about Haumea is that the planet has a thin 40-mile-wide ring circling it. Astronomers haven't managed to figure out how or why it appeared around the dwarf planet. Eleven Earths could fit across the equator of Jupiter, and if our planet was the size of a grape, the gas giant would be as large as a basketball. Nine spacecraft have already visited Jupiter. Seven of them just flew by, and two orbited the huge planet. The most recent of them, Juno, arrived at Jupiter in 2016. The craters of the moon's south pole are likely to be the frostiest place in the whole solar system. The crater's floors are always in the shadow. That's why the temperature never rises above 397 degrees Fahrenheit, even during the day. If you decided to fly a plane to Pluto, your journey would take around 800 years. 
you'll find the highest mountain in the solar system on an asteroid called Vesta. Its peak rises 14 miles above the base of the mountain. This makes Rye Silvia, that's what the mountain is called, almost three times taller than Everest. Saturn's rings weren't discovered all at once. It happened gradually. That's why they were named alphabetically in the order scientists found them. Now they go like this. D, C, B, A, F, G, and E. A day on Venus is around 243 Earth days long. But the bad news is that you'd have to wait for a weekend for three years. All because a day on Venus is longer than its year. A solar phenomenon called Terminator Events is taking place at the Sun's equator. Disastrous magnetic field collisions seem to cause ginormous twin tsunamis of plasma. These tsunamis tear across the star's surface, moving at a speed of 1,000 feet per second. They can last for weeks at a time and happen almost every decade. The winds on Neptune are the fastest in our solar system. Most of them can reach the speed of 1,600 miles per hour. Almost any of these enormous storms could easily swallow our entire planet. The 18th brightest star in the night sky, Fomalhaut, is a terrifying sight. It's dubbed the Eye of Sauron because a ring of dust and debris circling it makes it look like a giant eye staring into your soul. The intimidating star is more than twice the mass of our sun and is 25 light years away from Earth, which isn't that far away considering distances in space. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, the planet's gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart. It'll probably result in the formation of a ring around Mars. An asteroid the size of a car enters the atmosphere of our planet every year. Such an intruder could wipe out a small town off the face of the Earth. Dust and smoke would rise into the atmosphere, preventing sunlight from reaching the surface of the planet. It would cause the temperatures all over the world to drop and the climate would change. Luckily, such asteroids burn in the atmosphere before they even come close to the surface. The radio signal produced by a spacecraft when it contacts Earth is less powerful than a light bulb in your fridge. By the time this signal reaches our planet, its power is only one billionth of one billionth of a watt. No wonder that antennas gathering these super weak signals are huge. The deep space network that detects signals from spacecraft has dish antennas that measure up to 230 feet across. That's more than the width of a soccer field. In 1999, NASA lost a Mars orbiter because one engineering team was using the metric system and another was doing calculations with the help of the imperial system. Nebulas are giant clouds of gas and dust. With time, gravity starts to pull these clumps of dust and gas together. They grow larger and larger and their gravity gets more powerful. One day, a nebula's mass becomes so great that it collapses under its own gravity and forms a new star. Around 4,000 light years away in the constellation of Scorpion, there is the Butterfly Nebula. Its wingspan is greater than three light years and the structure inside the nebula is one of the most complicated ever observed. The nebula's central star, a white dwarf, is heated to an insane 450,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This means it was formed from another huge star, likely more than five times the size of our sun. The white dwarf is surrounded by a thick disk of dust and gas at the equator. That's what probably makes the whole structure look like an hourglass or a butterfly. If you decided to lump together all the known asteroids in the solar system, their total mass wouldn't exceed even 10% of the mass of our moon. A cloud of water vapor is floating in space. It surrounds a supermassive black hole 12 billion light years away from Earth. The cloud contains 140 trillion times the entire volume of water on our planet. Astronomers think this water cloud appeared just 1.6 billion years later than the universe itself. The densest objects in space are neutron stars. They are the size of a small city. Yet their mass is about 1.4 times the mass of our sun. A single teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh a billion tons. 
and a neutron star's gravity is 2 billion times stronger than the gravity of our planet. In 1993, the Galileo probe was traveling past a miniature asteroid. It was no more than 20 miles across. And still, the tiny thing had a one-mile-wide moon. Astronomers have discovered tons of moons orbiting minor planets in the solar system since then. We live inside the Sun. The star's atmosphere stretches way beyond its visible surface, and our planet is well within its reach. That's how the gust of the solar wind creates such a breathtaking phenomenon as the northern and southern lights.